Good morning. My name is Jim Haldeman. I am with Lesman Instrument Company in Bensonville, Illinois. Today we're going to take a few minutes to give you an overview as to how to set up, configure, and commission a Siemens SIPART PS2 positioner. The first thing I wanted to discuss are the components that you'll typically need when mounting a positioner to an actuator. Today we're going to be looking at a rotary actuator, a rack and pinion style. This is a double acting actuator. So what you would need for any assembly would be a linkage kit, a coupler, and the positioner. The linkage kits can be provided by Siemens and they have inventory uh, to mount to most common actuators, whether they're rotary or linear. Uh, just let your sales rep know the make, model, and size of your actuator, and then they can determine which bracket that you would need, uh, as well as the coupler you would need to engage the PS2 onto the actuator itself. So the first thing you'll need to do when you're mounting a PS2 to any uh, rotary actuator is, of course, the mechanical installation. So again, we've got a double acting actuator. You take your bracket, mount it to the top. Along with the bracket, you'll get four set screws. Obviously, insert the four screws and tighten. So we've attached the linkage to the actuator. Uh, make sure that you tighten down these bolts quite tight. Um, if you have any um, looseness in this bracket to the actuator, you can create some hysteresis in the performance of the, the positioner, which can affect your accuracy. So make sure you tighten these down uh, snug. So now we're going to insert the coupler. The coupler is the piece of stainless steel that connects the stem of the actuator to the base of the positioner. So to do so, this coupler has an Allen wrench screw in it. You can see right here. So you'll slip that onto the positioner, make sure that it's tight, and use your Allen wrench to tighten that Allen screw so that it's snug. You do not want this to move. Okay. Now the coupler is slotted on the bottom and has a spring-loaded tension to make sure that its fit into the actuator is, is tight. So what you do then is simply align the positioner over the top of the valve so that the coupler engages. Rotate the positioner to the proper orientation and then just compress and you can hear that spring of that coupler actually compress inside to the stem of the actuator. And the unit mechanically is there. What I typically do then is, depending on the size of it, turn the unit over and now you'll have to put in the screws to attach the positioner to the same bracket. So here we have the assembled PS2 linkage coupler on the double acting actuator. Again, it's very important that all of the connectors are tight straight, properly aligned uh, where they need to be. Um, if that isn't the case, uh, you'll have some errors with regards to your setup configuration. So take the time and make sure that that is done properly. So the next thing I'd like to discuss are the mechanical um, components inside the positioner that you need to understand uh, what they are and where they need to be set for your specific application. The PS2 is unique uh, with these uh, mechanical adjustments because they offer some advantages. Uh, the first thing that I want to point out to you is this yellow gear ratio switch mechanism right here. And you can see using a screwdriver, I can slide that yellow gear switch to one of two positions. If you look at the top of the positioner, there is a label. The label indicates that when the yellow switch is in the orientation here where you can see it on this end, that is a gear ratio that is designed to be used on linear valves up to three quarters of an inch of travel. The other indicator, which would be in that direction, shows you that any rotary valve 
or any linear valve with a stroke greater than three quarters of an inch, the positioner gear switch should be in the 90 degree orientation. After you have made that determination based upon your application, again here we're using a rotary valve, double acting, so we want this to be in the 90 degree orientation. So that is going to be in this direction, which is where it's at. After you do that, you want to make sure that this, which is a secondary lock for high vibration applications, you can see that you can adjust this dial to three locations. 33 degrees off or 90 degrees. So after you set the slip clutch or the gear ratio bar, you're going to want to adjust this. So I've adjusted this all the way so that it's in a 90 degree position. This assures that it isn't locked. The last thing I wanted to mention to you, which is unique to the PS2, is the clutch wheel right here. And you can see, you can use your finger and turn that clutch. Many people are reluctant to push it too hard. They think they're going to break it. But I put one hand in back of the positioner. Using my thumb, I can move the thumb wheel. What this does is it assures or allows you to move the potentiometer internal to the positioner so that it is on the active zone. And we'll, get, we'll show you what that means when we actually calibrate the unit. So now what I'd like to do is to begin to show you how to set up and configure the PS2 now that I've shown you how to mount it to a rotary actuator. So what you'll need is a power supply. And what we have here for this presentation is simply a Merriam M334 uh, loop calibrator, which also has a 9-volt power supply in it. So I simply turn this to the on position, which creates enough power to power the PS2. And when the unit initializes or turns on, you'll see it's flashing a display that says no any. No any represents no initialization, which means the unit has not been previously set up. So from here, one of the things you can do using the push buttons is manually stroke the valve. So the PS2 has three push buttons, a hand button, a down arrow button, and an up arrow button. To manually move the valve, you can use the down arrow, you can see the valve is going to move, or the up arrow, depending upon the location of the valve. So you can see by pushing the button, I was able to stroke the valve. If I want to move the valve in the opposite direction and do it quicker, I hit a button, and then I hit the opposite button, and it goes fast. So you can get from one side to the other quicker. So what I've done there was I've, I've proven to myself mechanically that everything is aligned properly and functioning because the stem rotated. Had I pushed a button here and I didn't see the valve move, I would know that there's some mechanical binding taking place which is not going to allow me to set the unit up. Because I saw the movement, I know the unit is mechanically safe and we can now begin the auto calibration process. To get into the calibration process, you hit and hold the hand button for approximately four to five seconds until you see on the display um, a, a different menu. And in this case, it's asking us what type of uh, actuator we're installed on. And turn stands for quarter turn, uh, which would be, in this case, a rotary valve. And if it were a linear valve or a three-way valve, you would choose the way option, which you can see here. So we want a quarter turn, so we're going to keep it on the quarter turn um, indicator. So this hand button here will change the parameters. So you can see there I'm on parameter 1. You hit it again to go to parameter 2. Parameter 2 confirms where we want to be with regards to orientation. If you remember earlier, we talked about on a rotary valve, we want to be in the 90 degree orientation. Well, the PS2 is confirming now that yes, indeed, you're on the 90 degree. 
if we were using it on a 33, which would be a linear valve, we would change that to 33. But because we're on a rotary, we'll keep it at 90. You hit and hold the hand button again, and it automatically skips to parameter 4, which is where we start the process. All you need to do is take one finger, push down, and hold on the plus arrow for approximately five seconds, and the unit will start to auto-cal. I like to describe this as a dog chasing its tail, and when the dog is chasing its tail, it's where you want to be. It's a good thing. That means it's the unit is thinking. So because we didn't have the valve in the, either the somewhere in the mid-stroke between open and closed, the, the unit couldn't auto-cal. So what I'm actually going to do is go get out of calibration mode and go back into the no any mode by holding down the hand button. And now I'm going to stroke this valve so that it moves to some position between 0 and 100%. Now I'm going to go back into configuration mode. And the values that you previously set, to go back you hit the hand button and the down arrow. So the values you previously set are already there. So I've got quarter turn valve, 90 degree, back at number 4, hit and hold. And now the unit's going to start. Okay, great point. So here, if you come in close with the video, this is very important. You can see this on the display here. This character looks like a U. The problem right now is the unit has a potentiometer on the inside, and if I'm not in the active zone of the potentiometer, the unit cannot calibrate. That's where this slip clutch comes in handy, where I mentioned before. So using your finger, you turn the dial until the U becomes a zero. The zero indicates you're on the potentiometer. Now what you do is continue the calibration by hitting the up button, and the unit continues its calibration. So now we're in run four. The unit goes through five steps. You can see the dog is chasing its tail, which means you shouldn't be concerned. Everything is working fine. Depending upon the size of the actuator will determine how long it takes to do your calibration. You'll hear some popping and hissing. What that is is the positioner creating a digital footprint as to what's happening in this mechanical device. It's moving in one direction, it's moving another. It's creating a baseline of how much air it took to move from one point to the next and how long it took to get from one point to the next. And it's putting that on storage and what it'll do over time, if that changes, it can let you know, which may lead to some maintenance issues you have to address with the valve itself. So again, the tail is chasing the dog. We're just waiting for it to finish. The unit also has the ability to do a leak test. The leak test allows you to determine if anywhere in the pneumatic loop, could be the, the tubing you have coming in, could be blow by on the actuator. If you have any air being lost in this uh, scenario, it will actually tell you that so you can correct it. So the unit is completely calibrated. To get back to the main menu, you hit and hold down the hand button. It might take a few seconds, maybe five. The first thing that will pop up on the screen is 5.00, which happens to be the firmware version. The first thing that happens after you do the auto-cal is the unit comes up in manual mode. This is very important because if you forget to put it in auto mode after you do the calibration, the unit will not respond to its input signal. So to put it into auto mode, you simply hit the button. To go back into manual mode, you hit the hand button. Again, in manual mode, you can stroke that valve in either direction. So, auto mode, and now using the handheld, you can actually uh, 
dial in the display so you can see on our Miriam we're at 70.5 percent and on the positioner we're at 70.5 percent and then if we change it the PS2 will respond. So essentially those are the the basic uh, setup steps to take. Um, to summarize the key um, differences and things to, to be careful for, make sure, you, make sure you have the slip clutch in the proper orientation, make sure it's locked properly, and remember that when you're doing the setup, if you get the U, use your slip clutch and adjust that until the U turns into an O and continue your calibration. And once you've done that, you should be all set and uh, move on to your next positioner to calibrate. So one last thing I'd like to mention to you is a, a recent product that has been introduced by Siemens, uh, and I guess an enhanced version of the PS2, which is what we call the IVB, Internal Volume Booster. And its general role is to replace external volume boosters that you may have used in the past on large actuators where you need to stroke them relatively quickly. Uh, so what we did is we created a, a module that mounts underneath any PS2. Um, we've ex we've uh, extended the length of the uh, coupler and uh, run it all the way through to the bottom of the unit. Uh, you can actually use an existing positioner and then just buy the retrofit IVB to fit underneath should that uh, solve your problem. So what we wanted to do and what Siemens did was designed a unit that would be more compact, uh, a unit that did not require hanging uh, external volume boosters off the side. Uh, we also uh, were hoping to minimize the amount of potential air leaks when you use external volume boosters. And um, so this unit uh, is available uh, single acting, which is what we see here. And it's also available double acting, which would basically uh, just have another unit on the side and uh, can be used with the Siemens standard Macrolean housing as well as the flame proof housing. Um, so uh, relatively new product kind of to enhance the, the, the PS2 uh, as we knew it in the past. So that kind of summarizes what I wanted to touch on today. Um, of course if you have any questions about the PS2 in general or any other product from Siemens for that matter please feel free to contact Lessman Instrument Company in uh, one of our offices here in the Midwest. We'd be more than happy, happy to uh, take care of it. Thank you, and have a great day.